Alright folks, so we're getting ready to do our first carbohydrate qualitative test together, and this is the Mollish test. So I've got a series of test tubes here. They could be carbohydrates or they might not be carbohydrates. That is for you to decide with the lab procedure. So the order that I have these up, the very first one is sucrose, and then fructose, and then maltose is the third one. We have unknown number one, unknown number two, then we have lactose, xylose, starch, which is next to last, and then finally glucose at the very end. So that is the order of the test tube, so that way you can write down the proper observations under the ones that you actually need. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do in the Mollish test, I'm going to take the Mollish reagent, and that's what it looks like right there in the jar, and it tells me to add a couple of drops of Mollish reagent to each test tube. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do here. I'm just going to add a couple of drops, two or three, into each test tube. It's qualitative, folks. That's all that matters. So three, two or three there and I'll just keep adding them into each test tube. Uh, after I add the Mollish reagent, I'll give it a slot mix just to make sure that all of that reagent is down on the inside. And then the next step is going to tell me to add a couple of milliliters of sulfuric acid. And this sulfuric acid, folks, has to be concentrated. So I'm just going to grab each one of these tubes. I'm going to give them a good shake just to make sure that everything is mixed properly. If you see any observational changes, you can maybe write that down at this moment, right? Maybe your data sheet's going to ask for that. And then we'll add our sulfuric acid. So the sulfuric acid in the lab directions, uh, it's going to tell me to add it slowly on the sides and then allow it to drain down to the bottom, but not necessarily mix them. So I'm going to slowly allow the sulfuric to drain to the bottom, and then I'll just sit it here and allow it to do its thing. And then we'll come back and we'll take a look at each one of these test tubes after I finish the rest of them, all right? Uh, if you notice, you're probably already seeing something happen in that very first tube, so take a look at it. I'll bring that up a little bit closer in just a second. And there's my second, and I'll put it there. We'll just kind of wait out for it, see what happens. And folks, here's the first one. So I think that you can see there is a observational change that's happening here. Something is going on in that test tube. And this is the Mollish test. So the Mollish test is going to help me determine if something is a carbohydrate or not. That's the whole purpose in this. So I'm going to continue to add sulfuric, and then we'll come back here in just a second, and we'll pick up from there. Okay, so we're back with the Mollish test, and this took me about five minutes to finish adding the sulfuric acid to the rest of the test tubes from the previous video. So here's the overall view of what we're seeing with the Mollish test with the solutions that I have brought forward. So some of these we know are carbohydrates. Uh, some of these we might not know if they're a carbohydrate or not, especially the unknowns A and B. That's the whole purpose of really analyzing those. So I want to now turn to each one of these test tubes maybe a little bit better so that way you can really record your observations down that you see with the Mollish test. So I'm going to bring this forward just a little bit and maybe zoom in a little bit better for you. And again, the first test tube is sucrose. The second test tube is fructose. The third test tube, 
Uh, this is kind of weird, but do you see that interface ring? Is that purpley to you? That's going to be the question that you're going to have to answer for yourself. So that is maltose. The next one is an unknown. The next one beside of it, which would be this one, is another unknown. The next one in line, that's lactose. The next one is xylose. Then we have starch, next to last. And then at the very end, we have glucose. All right, so there is a close-up picture or video image of all of the test tubes that we have tested in this qualitative test. All right, so we know which ones are carbohydrates. We know that those should at least give us a positive test. And the two here in the center, those are going to be our unknowns. Are those unknowns carbohydrates or not? That is the purpose of the mollish. And now you know what that observation should be with the mollish qualitative test. Okay, so this next test is the I2KI test, or the iodine test. And that's what I have in the bottle here. Uh, it's just my reagent that I'm going to be adding to this series of test tubes in order for me to determine what my observations are. So the I2KI test is basically a test for complex carbohydrates. A complex carbohydrate, of course, is something that has more than one sugar involved. So if there is a chain of sugars on these test tubes, I'm going to get a positive result from this test. Otherwise, it's going to be regarded as a simple sugar, and a simple sugar is basically just one carbohydrate, and that is it. All right, so here's the lineup of the test tubes. I'll tell you what the uh, identification is in just a minute, but the directions just simply tell me to add a couple of drops, and that's all that I'm going to do into each one of these test tubes. So a couple of drops goes into each one. And then I'll give it a good mix here in the very end. And we'll take a look at our observations. And at that point is when I'll go through and I'll tell you what the IDs of the sugar solutions are, which ones are the unknowns and so forth. All right, so there is the addition of the IKI solution. And I think you already know kind of what to uh, expect that's going to go on here. So I'm just going to take these out and I'm going to give these a pretty good shake just to make sure that that reagent is completely mixed on me. Again, the beauty of qualitative analysis is not measuring anything exactly. You just add it, mix it, and then write down your observations, folks. And look at that. We at least have one that looks a little different than everything else. I don't even think that I have to zoom in here. I think that you can honestly see which one is which as far as a positive test is concerned. So let's start off with the left-hand test tube here, and let's just go through, and that way I can give you what the identifications of these are. So in the very first test tube, this is lactose. And then in the second test tube that we get this particular color with that's different than everything else, that is starch. All right, in test tube number three, this is unknown number one. Okay. Test tube number four, this is sucrose. Test tube number five, this is glucose. Test tube number six, that is fructose. Test tube number seven, that is our unknown number two. Test tube number eight, we have xylose. Test tube number eight, we have xylose. And then test tube number nine, over here at the very end, that is maltose. All right? So rewind that if you didn't catch the names or if I went too fast for you, but you can really see the difference between what we would call a negative and a positive test 
for our carbohydrate solutions here. So here is the traditional, almost what everything has tested. And then this is a positive test for I2 and KI, which is this blue black color. And again, this test tells us if we have a simple carbohydrate or if we have a complex carbohydrate, which is something that is made up of more than one carbohydrate. All right, so that's it of the I2KI uh, test, folks. It can't be any easier than that or any quicker. So we're going to move on to the next qualitative test, and that's coming up. Okay, so this next test is going to be bar fluids. And if you look over to the left, it's kind of fuzzy, but that is my bar fluid solution that I'm gonna be adding to each one of these possible carbohydrates. The purpose of the bar fluid is to tell us if we have a reducing sugar or a non-reducing sugar. And if you don't know the difference, folks, that's the purpose of the lecture. So make sure that you show up to lecture, make sure that you take notes, and that way you'll know the difference between a reducing sugar and a non-reducing sugar. So the directions told me to take one milliliter of my carbohydrates, and that's what I have into the test tube. And then it says add three milliliters of the bar fluid reagent. Okay, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to add three mils of the reagent to each one of these. Again, it's qualitative. I don't need to be pipetting. I don't need to be exact with these. If a reaction's going to happen, it's going to happen, folks. It's as simple as that. So after I add the barfwood reagent, notice that all of these so far are blue. There's really no difference in them at all. And there really shouldn't be because the next step basically tells me to put them in a hot water bath. So I'm going to put these into a hot water bath for five minutes and then I'm going to take them out and I'm going to see if there's any differences in the test tubes at that point. Then the directions tell me, well, if you don't see anything different, put those test tubes back into the water bath again for five more minutes and then take them out for a second time. So that's what I'm getting ready to do. I'm just going to put these into a boiling water bath that I have ready. I'm gonna sit them in there for five minutes. I'm gonna take them out. And then after I take them out, we'll take a look at them. And then the ones that we don't see a change for, we'll put them back into that water bath for another five minutes. We'll take them out and then we'll record our observations one more time. So this is the boiling boring Barfowitz test as of now. All right, so let me go to the water bath and then we'll come back. So this video is just to prove to you that I am putting it in a hot water bath. So that way you can trust me. So here I have all of the test tubes in the hot water bath and we're gonna let this sit out for five minutes. We'll take them out and then we'll make some observations on what we see. So nice and convenient right here. All right, so we'll come back in a few minutes and we'll see how these will turn out. Okay, so we're at the five minutes of the initial heating for the carbohydrate test tubes for the bar fluid test. And at first glance from here, it looks like nothing has really changed. I don't really see a difference in the solutions from where they were before. before. But if I take a closer look at the test tubes, and let me focus in on here for you. You actually do see a precipitate there, folks. Uh, it, I can actually see it right there, right? It's a reddish kind of clump of solid that's at the very bottom of this test tube. So it looks like number one has provided me with a precipitate. And then if I take a look at number two, this is pretty clear. There's nothing in the bottom. So I would say that's negative as of right now. If I take a look at number three, 
I actually do see a precipitate there again. You can see it in the bottom. It's that dark blob. From here, it's reddish. It's almost like a brick red color. So number three has given me a precipitate. Number four looks pretty clear. There's nothing in it. Number five looks pretty clear. There's nothing in the bottom. Number six also looks very clear. Nothing in the bottom yet again. Number seven, there is a precipitate down there at the very bottom. You can actually see that small little clump and it moves around on me as I turn the test tube over. So this one does have a precipitate there at the bottom. You might not be able to see that, but it is there. Number eight does not have a precipitate yet, so it's clear. And then finally, number nine, no precipitate formation at this point. All right, so now the directions tell me to put all of these kind of back into the uh, hot water bath. Uh, the ones that did not form a precipitate, but quite honestly, the ones that already formed a precipitate, it's not going to hurt them. So I'm just going to put this whole rack back into the water bath. I'm going to keep it in there for another five minutes, and then we'll take a look at it again. Okay, so we're at the end of the second five minute heating period and I'm just gonna go through them all again because I put them all back in for another five minutes, but you know which ones turned in the first five minutes. And now I'm just gonna go through them one more time and we'll see if any extras have turned as well. So this is the first test tube and the first test tube, but you can probably actually see more precipitate that's down here in the very bottom at this point. Um, but there's kind of the solid chunk that we see in the bottom. So it is brick red. Uh, number two, number two has stayed pretty clear on the bottom. There's no precipitate at all with that one. Number three, Number three, we see a precipitate. You see the solid chunk that's there at the bottom that's kind of floating around. So that is a positive test. Number four, there is no precipitate here. It stayed pretty in blue all the way top to bottom. Number five, the same thing's gonna happen here. No precipitate formed in the bottom of that tube. Number six, Number six, no precipitate formed into the bottom of that tube either. Again, kind of hard for you to see maybe for some of these. Uh, number seven, I see a solid chunk there in the very bottom. There is a brick red precipitate that formed. So that is a positive test for us. Uh, finally, number eight, again, I see solid at the bottom of that. So it is floating around. It is not crystal clear like some of these others are. And then finally, number nine, number nine, I see no precipitate at all in the test tube. All right. So those are the observations that we can make for the Barfowoods test. Now, I want to go through and tell you what the identities of these are now that we've done the test. Uh, so in tube number one, over here to the far left, that is fructose. Tube number two, that is the unknown number two for this test. Number three, this tube is xylose. Number four, that tube is lactose. Number five, this tube is sucrose. Number six, that tube is starch. Number seven, this tube is glucose. Number eight, this is unknown number one. And then finally, number nine at the end, that is maltose. All right, so those are the identities of the test tubes and the order that we tested them. Uh, again, I want to say that unknown number one is the same unknown throughout all the tests. Unknown number two is the same unknown throughout all the tests, but I'm just testing them in a different order. It's just kind of how I'm grabbing them and putting them up onto the rack. All right, so there's your Barfowitz test, uh, and then we'll continue on with the qualitative test in the next video.
Okay, so in this qualitative scheme, we are doing the Benedict's test. And the Benedict's test is another test that's going to determine the difference between a non-reducing sugar and a reducing one. And if you take a look through your flow chart, you're going to see that this is on the disaccharide side of the house. So what you see in, on these test tubes is really just the Benedict's reagent. That's all that it is. I mean, that is a bluish kind of coppery color. And then with each one of these, I'm going to put in a couple of drops of sugar solution. And um, the sugar solution I will call out as I add them, but the directions tell me 10 drops. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, so as you can tell, there's nothing really major that's happening as far as the uh, observations are going right now with the Benedicts. And it's actually not going to uh, until we put it into a hot water bath at 100 degrees. All right, so that one was sucrose. Uh, my next one in number two is gonna be fructose. All right, so there's 10 drops there. Uh, the next one is going to be maltose. So I'll put 10 drops there. Okay. Uh, my fourth one over is unknown number one. And again, it is the same unknown number one for all of the schemes so far. Uh, the next one over is going to be uh, my unknown number two. So one, two, three, four, five over. One, two, three, four, five over. Unknown number two goes here. All right. Next one over is going to be lactose. So that's going to be in this one. Probably a little more than 10, but it's okay. Roundabout. Next one over, that's xylose. Okay. Next to last, that's the starch. And then the next one over, that is glucose. All right, so the difference between a reducing and a non-reducing sugar, meaning that copper is in the solution and can copper get reduced. So we are going to see a, an observational change and that observational change we'll take a look at once we get it out of the hot water bath. So it says two minutes in a hot water bath. I'll go put it into a water bath. I'll bring it back and we'll take a look at the test tubes together. Okay, so here we go. This is the results of the Benedict's test, and I'm going to go down the line, and we'll take a look at each test tube individually. So this very first one is sucrose, and as you can tell, sucrose probably didn't really do too much of anything for us. So let me zoom in, and that way you can take a closer look at the observation. So there is sucrose test tube after it's been heated for two minutes. The next one is fructose. And there is fructose, so make your observations and uh, use those observations to determine what fructose is according to the Benedicts. Number three is maltose. So there is maltose. Again, make your observations and those observations mean something and that's for you to figure out. Number four is unknown number one. So there is unknown number one. Again, make observations write them down, use those to answer the questions. Unknown number two, there we go. Next one in line is lactose. Okay, next one is xylose. Next one, starch. And then finally, glucose is last. All right, so go back, take a look at what the observations for uh, the Benedict's test is supposed to be. Go back and figure out what Benedict's test actually tests for, because that's the only way that you will be answer, or be able to answer these particular types of questions. So folks, there you go. Uh, there are the sugars from the Benedict's test. 
we probably have about two more tests left. Uh, and then after that, our qualitative scheme is now finished. Okay, so we're ready to do the cell of one-off test together, and the cell of one-off test is going to give me a color change. And the color change is really going to depend upon what kind of sugar is present in the test tubes. So if we get a peachy blue color, we're looking at an aldose, and if we get a cherry reddish color, we're going to be looking at a keto. So what you see in the test tubes right now is really just the carbohydrate solution. I think the directions told me 10 drops of carbohydrate as well well as water and water was 15 drops so I've taken those two I've already added them into each test tube so they're already prepared ready to go uh, this is the cell one off reagent folks there's nothing really fancy about this reagent it is very clear it looks just like water there is no color at all to the reagent and what I've done is that the directions told me I needed nine milliliters of the reagent so that's quite a bit so the only thing that I did was take another test tube rack, I put test tubes in it, put nine mils of cell one-off reagent into each one, so that way I can just simply grab the test tube, dump it into this one, and these things are ready to go into the water bath after that point. All right, so I'm gonna take the first test tube of cell one-off reagent, I'll add it to the very first test tube with the sugar. I'll try not to be as messy with the next one, but. Folks, look at this. I mean, you're actually seeing nothing really crazy happening into the test tubes at this point, right? So I'm just going to continue to add these two things together, and we will go down the line, and we'll talk about the identities of each of these solutions because they are somewhat out of order, just like some of the other tests were, right? Uh, so I do that for a reason. That way you have to pay attention to the video, and you can't just skim through and uh, know that it's the same order with every single thing that we do. All right, so I've got three test tubes left. And I'll just continue to mix, add the cell one off, and then folks, it will go into a boiling water bath. Uh, it actually says no longer than two and a half minutes. So at two and a half minutes, we will take them out. All right, so there they are. I've added my reagent, my sugar, my water, everything's now together. And let's talk about the order of which these sugars will come to you in. All right, so the very first test tube here is maltose. Then the next test tube is unknown number one. The next test tube is gonna be lactose. The fourth one over will be unknown number two. The fifth one is going to be xylose. The sixth one is going to be starch. The seventh one is going to be fructose. The eighth is going to be glucose, and the ninth is going to be sucrose. All right, so again, cell and one off will change color. It will tell me what type of sugar that we have, and it's either gonna be an aldose or a ketose here. All right, so into the water bath they go, two and a half minutes. I'll see you back, and we'll take a look at the observations. Okay, folks, so this is after the cello one-off test, and I have placed it into a hot water bath. I have taken them out in two and a half minutes. You have not seen that. I've saved you time. Look at me. And now we're going to take a look at the observations. So the observations of the test tubes, again, we're going to go kind of in order, and I'm going to bring out each one of these test tubes so that way you can see it a little bit better and maybe put something uh, white behind it so you can make your observations. Keep in mind the cello one-off said, Peach or blue color will give you aldose, and a cherry red color or reddish color will give you a ketose. So I think it is very obvious on which one are ketoses at this point, right? All right, so let's start with our very first test tube, and the very first test tube is going to be maltose. So let me focus in, and let me just hold up that so you can see that a little bit better. So again, peachy or blue color is an aldose and a cherry red is a ketose. Okay, so there's number one, there's maltose. And then the next one in line is our unknown number one. 
Unknown number one is there. Write down your observations. Make your determination. Number three is lactose. Number four is unknown number two. Number five is xylose. Number six is starch. The seventh tube is fructose. Mom, oh, wonder what color that is. Eight. This is your glucose. And nine. This is sucrose. All right, folks, so there you have it. There's the results for the Cella one-off test. And if you want to take a look at the entire set all at one time, there you go. So make your observations, write them out in the data sheet, and figure out what those observations mean. And we'll continue on with our last test, which will be the Biles test after this one. Okay, so we're probably at the very last qualitative test for carbohydrates, and that is the Biles test. So here is the Biol or the Biles test. You tomato, tomato, it doesn't really matter. So Biol or Biol. All right, so it tells me put three milliliters of the reagent in the test tube, and that's what I've basically done. So you can see that the Biles reagent does have a slight color that's associated with it, and then it tells me to add a couple of drops of each of the carbohydrate. So the very first one here is going to be sucrose, and I'm just gonna add two or three drops. One, two, three, all right? And that's really all that we need, maybe one for good measure. I think that first one was just a bubble. It wasn't actually a drop. All right, so there's sucrose. The second one here is fructose. So again, a couple of different drops. One, two, three. All right, my third one is maltose. My fourth one is my unknown number one. Then unknown number two. Then we have lactose that comes next. A couple of drops. My next one is xylose. The next one is starch. And then the final one is going to be glucose. All right, so the test now tells me to put this into a water bath. We're gonna to go to a water bath together this time because it is very time sensitive. It says, remove it when you see a color and then write down the time that it took to change color. So what we're looking for here is the difference between pentose and a hexose. Pentoses typically are bluey, greeny color, and then the hexoses are typically a brown and a gray color. So those are the two observational changes that we're looking for, but hopefully they will not look like this neon yellow color that you see right now. So we're gonna turn it over to the water bath, we're gonna start the timer, and we're gonna see when these things begin to All right, folks, so I've got my bowling water bath going, and we are getting ready to dunk a few test tubes at a time, and then we're going to start the timers, and then we're going to go through and take them out when we see one of those test tubes begin to change color. So the beaker that I've chosen is not big enough to fit all of them, so I'm just going to put our first set in, and now I'm going to hit start on my stopwatch. So let's see how many more we can actually take in here. All right, so as you can see, I'm already seeing some color changes here, folks. So I'm gonna take this one out at 11 or 12 seconds. This one comes out in 11 or 12 seconds. All right, so there's my first two. And these are still getting heated. 
right? So we'll just let them stay in there. Directions are going to say uh, don't really heat them too long. After a certain time, you're going to start to take them out anyway. Uh, here I see another one that is beginning to change color. If I can maybe... There we go. So that one's going to happen at 45 seconds. Again, we'll just kind of take a look. It looks like this one's getting ready to change. It's starting to get darker on me. Exciting stuff, isn't it? Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, this one does look like it's starting to change color. That one's happening at one minute. This one now looks like it's turning color on me. So that's going to be at 1 minute 20 seconds. This one looks like it's turned color on me. That's going to be at 1 minute, let's just say 20 seconds for that one as well. This one, nothing really is going on with it yet. Five minutes is the actual time that they tell you to stop. All right, so this one looks like it's not turned. We're approaching the two minute mark and I'm gonna put the next two in at the two minute mark just so we don't waste any more time because those might actually change a little bit faster for me. So we'll see. Is still in the hot water bath. It has not turned at all. And we're approaching the three minute mark. All right, so I'm going to pause the video here. We're going to continue to let this heat. But if at five minutes it has not turned color, I'm taking it out anyway. And we're just going to write down no color change if that's what we see. So here we're at three minutes, 30 seconds. I'm not going to continue to record. Uh, when we do take it out, I'll write that time down. So that way you know when it did change color. Okay, so we are at the very end of the Baal or the Biles test, and here's the assortment of test tubes that we pulled from the hot water bath together, and we saw that actually change right in front of our eyes. So I'm going to go through, we're going to talk about each test tube, I'll give you the reminders of the times that we took them out, and that way you can make your observations. Again, what we're looking for here is a blue or green color versus a brown or gray color. So one is representative of a pentose, one one is representative of a hexose. All right, so here's the very first test tube. And again, we are looking for a blue-green or a brown-gray. So you can make your observations. Again, it's very dark. I know that. I apologize. And we took that out in 11 seconds. All right, the next one. We took that out in 11 seconds. That was sucrose. The first one was fructose. All right, the next one. It looks a little bluish from here, just to kind of help you out. I know screens can be a little different. That is xylose. We took that out at 45 seconds. Uh, the sucrose from test tube number two, that is a foresty green color. Uh, the fructose from the very first one, that's just really a dark, kind of muddy brown color is the way that one turned. All right, the fourth one in, we pulled this at 60 seconds in. This is also a foresty green color. And this is unknown number one. All right, the fifth one and the sixth one were both 1 minute 20 seconds. So our next one is maltose, and this really here, it looks kind of green, but it also looks brown as well. 
more brown so than green. And this is maltose. The next one was also 1 minute 20 seconds. And that is a foresty green color. And this one's lactose. All right, the next two. Starch is up. Starch we pulled at 45 seconds. That is a foresty green color. Next one is glucose. Glucose is also this foresty green color. Little bit of brown, muddy in that as well though. I would probably say more brown. And probably the same way with starch. It is foresty green, but it's more brown than anything. And then finally, our unknown number two. This one did not change at all. It did not go blue-green. It did not go brown-gray. And that stayed in the entire time for five minutes. All right, so here are the color changes. Again, I do apologize for the way that they look. Again, it will be very difficult to see what they are on your computer screen, depending on what kind of screen that you're looking at. All right, so fructose, sucrose, xylose, unknown number one, maltose, um, lactose, starch, glucose, and unknown number two here at the very end. Those are the orders somewhat of how we took them out uh, and how we put them in. So you're looking at colors, you're looking at observations, you're looking at blue-green versus brown-gray, and I'll take some close-up snapshots so that may maybe you'll see them a little bit better that way. All right, so that's it, a qualitative test. There's no more, that's it. So fill out your data sheets, write down your observations, make your determinations, answer those questions, and turn them in for me to dissect and bleed all over them. So this is probably just gonna confuse you even more, but I decided to add some water to these test tubes, and that way if I could water this down, you maybe could see the color a little bit better on your end. So the very first two that you see on the left is fructose, folks. And that fructose actually showing up greenish. I mean, I think that you can see that foresty green color. And beside of that is sucrose, and that also has that foresty green color as well. The third one that's kind of toward the back, that it's very evident that that is way, way blue. That is xylose. The fourth one down, you can maybe see that green color that's present there. That is unknown number one. Uh, the next one is maltose. Really isn't a green, it's just kind of dirty looking. It's kind of brownish color. You can kind of compare that to the one that's before that with unknown number one and see the difference there. The next one is lactose. You can see some of the green that's involved in the lactose as well. The next one is starch. And then as I go through, the next one is glucose. That glucose is really a, a, a brown gray color. Again, you see no green as evident as some of the others. And then finally, that last one is our unknown number two that did not change color at all. So maybe those colors will help you out a little bit better. I think that it clears up on which ones are green, which ones are blue, which ones are brown. So maybe use that for your observations now that you can see those a little bit better.